Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, get get excited. It. Yeah. This is him excited. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I know. I'm thinking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the mouse is running. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear it grinding over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, Hi Nick Welcome to another episode of Backyard Builds Dead beard better than Saxon Yeah, fuck Oh, you can't swear, can you? Oh, I'll beg it out <laughs> <laughs> You'll need to by the end of the uh, um, Today we're building my LS for the C10 This motor had 300,000 on it And... Me and Dan were just going to give it a freshen up, but I went to our engine builder's place, Tim, from Queenbean Engines, um, and he just checked it all, checked the specs, and the bore had a bit of a belly in it. So that controlled the next of the build. Um, so Tim suggested we bore it out and get oversized pistons and rings. Um, I was getting cam bearings done off him anyway because it's a special tool that knocks them in. Um, so yeah, that sort of changed the pace of the build. Um, we're using a new cam, a bigger cam. Uh, we're going to use the same connecting rods, same crank. Um, yeah. So first thing is you're going to measure it up? Yes. Yep. Yep. We um, are building this thing for highway Ks and not really towing. Um, I do about 110 Ks every day uh, to work. So it's not a crazy burnout motor, it's just going to be reliable. and. When I say reliable, I mean if it looks a bit iffy now, we're replacing it. So that's why it's all new bearings, new pistons, new rings. Um, yeah, we decked the heads as well. Um, they were fine. They were fine, but for an extra hundred dollars from Queenian Engines, you can get higher comp. So I done it. Yeah. Close up that chamber just a little bit. Yeah, and then the heads are dead flat and they're going to seal and won't leak. So that was kind of a win-win, really. Um, yeah. All right. Um, Let's go through measuring it. Yeah. So here is everything clean and spotless and sort of laid out, labelled, and what's new and what's not. Um, I've kept the boxes so you can see brands. Supposedly, these are the better ones to go. Um, First seven? Seven, yeah, the later model. Um, yep. Tim Gruber, Queenian Engines suggested that. And um, the things that slide near them, these bad boys, Daniel's soaking them. They're GM as well. They're, um, you know, not aftermarket brand or anything like that, just standard. What are we soaking them in, mate? Automatic transmission fluid. Okay, and when Dan put them in, you could see bubbles coming out of them, all the air and stuff, so, yeah. it's another little trick. Daniel has built a lot of go-fast motors in his time. He actually went to tech with the same guy that I keep referring to, Tim Gruber, who has all the machinery, just we don't have access to hones and <laughs> bores and fly cutters. Um, here are my heads. Um, so you can see he's taken a bit off, I'd say 10 thou, maybe more. Standard valves, standard guides. Um, got Tim to check them that they're sealing and they're good. Had to go new springs, double springs and the cap on top. So the springs are in there to suit the cam? Yes, yep, yep. The cam ain't crazy. You'll hear it, hear it eventually, but um, yeah, you gotta get 
get springs to suit the cam. Hastings, I think they were a couple over. I don't know if it was five or ten, I don't remember. Head bolts, that brand. Uh, I've already put them in. They're just your main. Standard, yep. The old ones were fine. They looked beautiful, but we're doing it. <laughs> Why not? Might as well. We're here. They're not much money. Same uh, standard as well, but we're doing them. For this motor having 300,000 on it, it looked awesome. It seriously looked really good. I bought this car, <laughs> which is for sale and over there if you want it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I bought it because my father-in-law had serviced it for most of its life. So I knew the full history and it was all highway case. She was a sales rep that drove to Melbourne, supposedly. By well, your father-in-law? Yep. Dan did a lot of it. <laughs> yep. Dan used to work to my, for my father-in-law at... Um, Trans state in Queenie. So now you're starting to see how we all know each other. Dan the man. Um, mm. These are original, but that's going to be new and new behind it. Same bolts. Uh, this is fine too. Um, didn't need replacing Queenie and engines said, so I'm not. Um, same thing. Gonna do new and new. That's what just the pistons look like. Nothing crazy. So Tim's obviously gone through and yeah measured them. He's to awesome. Get the bores. Yeah. And How good is that? Machine matched each bore. Yeah. Yep. For a cylinder. So that's why. You go you engine could, rebuilder. Yeah. He knows a lot more than me. Yeah. Or we'll go through measuring mains and crank and yep. get that done. Chains new, sprockets are original. I don't know. That's uh, GM as well. Yep. Yep. The mine's fine, but I'm doing it anyway. This is your pickup with seals. Oh, that's your upgrade too. Yep. That's cool. It's better. We'll explain that later. Yep. Um, we've used, I'd say about 10 bottles of those worth long range <laughs> cleaning. I've got a fancy parts washer at work, which I use, which is pressurized and heated. And I will send Zach the footage off my mobile and it'll be inserted now. Just in there? Okay. Yep. <laughs> and now we're back from... And now we're back from me parts washing at work in work time. Shh. Um... <laughs> Yeah, cleaned, ready to go. Brake cleaner, flange sealant, engine sealant, yep. instant gasket. Brand new measuring gear. Pen and paper. Unbelievable, eh? High class operation here, mate. Don't know about high class, just trying to be as accurate as we can. Ring Some grinder. More. Some more tools for the trade. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Let's get some work done, eh? Let's do it. Mr. Toyo, me and Zach love Japan stuff. I'll show him. Slowly, Daniel said, don't let it just spring out and sock it in there. <laughs> so I'm dead level, dead square, 90 degrees. Lock it off, using it comes the, out. Using the old eagle eye? Yeah. <laughs> and we'll check it in three spots and make sure there's sort of a bit of friction and drag there. This is all taught by Dan. All right. So what are we actually looking for here, Dan? What we're checking is our measurement of the main bearings. Yep. And then we'll measure the crankshaft yep. on the main journals. You subtract the numbers and you get your clearance. Clearances are, that's what makes and breaks engines. It's as simple as that, absolutely yep. simple as that. Um, rule of thumb for everyone, you've got- um, For a standard motor. For a, sta for a standard engine, you look for 
about one thou of clearance per inch of journal. Yep. So most of the LS, Cleveland, you look around the two, the two thou mark, keeps them nice and happy. Um, and that goes for both mains and for conrods as well. Um, and it's just a matter of just taking your time and just measuring. Tools like these aren't particularly, these ones are, but there are other versions of these which are not particularly expensive. Yep. We've been playing around, I've been showing Nick this morning, even with a set of, I've got a set here of King Chrome verniers, digital verniers, and they are close. Yeah. They are, they are really, really close to using a proper micrometer as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, we cross reference with the Misitoyo set, and yeah, it's, and, and it's they're insane. Good. An amazing point, bang for your buck. 0.01 of a mil. Of yeah. a mil, yeah, that's right. Which, which, which is, is Which is, yeah. For backyard builds, it's really Perfect. impressive. Yeah. The other thing that I'd like to show as well, for people, for checking, if you don't have any of this measuring gear, which a lot of people won't, we understand that, we know that, is this stuff. It's called Flexi Gauge. It's called Flexi Gauge. You are taking your life in your own hands with this stuff. However, <laughs> what it does is it does give you a good guide on what sort of clearances you have. It's a matter, you have this, the little measuring points here and inside here, which we'll show you, is a little stick. And it's a very, very little stick. Like a wax or something? It's like a wax, which you yep. could, probably can hardly even see there. Yep. And when you have your crankshaft and you have your bearing, you place it down on top of your bearing, like where the bearing is going to go. And then you torque, my God, this is tricky stuff. You torque your bearing cap down on top of that and it squishes out. And to then, your full uh, settings? sorry, to your full settings. That's full, correct. Full talk settings. To your full torque settings, okay. and then you just use this as a guide. This is in thousands. The red stuff is in thousands of an inch. So if you've got a squish of two, then you're happy, or a squish of three because it widens out obviously as it squishes. Um, it's like I said, if you haven't got the measuring gear. It's a really, really good way of ensuring that you have clearance. No clearance means bang bearings and nasty stuff and noises and things that you don't want to happen and motors that don't turn motors over. that don't turn over and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, there's a few different ways that we do it. I've learned using using the correct equipment, um, and that's what we we're, we're doing today. Get it all measured up. This is the, the one part about it is the measuring, the cleaning and the measuring. You can't be thorough enough when you do it. You, just, you have to do it. The other thing that we've done um, before Zach got out of bed this morning. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is, a, this is just a rod cleaner with a, with a tip on the end of it. We've gone through every single oil gallery in the block and also more specifically where the lifters run in the engine. This block has been hot tanked. It's been cleaned, it's been degreased, it's had everything done to it. We were still removing material out of those areas. Um, if you can find something like this at Bunnings or wherever you like, a can of carby clean, a bit of air pressure, you get in there, you make sure that all the old carbon, whatever buildup might be in there, if there is any, that there's none there. That just ensures that when, especially on first startup, that there's no floaties in there anywhere. They're not going to bed themselves into a bearing and, and cause an issue. Um, most of this stuff here is actually part of the bearing surface, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Most of the yeah. machine. Oh, 100%, yeah, 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 100%, yeah. So that's what you do. You just got to be clean, just be as clean as you can. And um, you end up with a successful engine. That's what it comes down to. The measurements. Um, and just the other thing too, crankshafts. You have your oil holes in the crankshaft. They're the, they're the ones that feed from the bearing. The oil gets fed into those and it gets spread through the crankshaft. Make sure all those holes, you can get a torch, you can see all of them, you can get a torch in there. Make sure there's no debris in them when, you, when you're rebuilding the motor. 
And once that's all cleaned, that's had a slight emery cloth down this morning. Um, we're ready to go. Oh. Yep, that's it. We'll just start. Um, uh, we're almost at the point now. We're happy with the crank. We can probably put the crank in the hole if you like, because we yeah. can always measure the. We can always measure the big ends after that's done. Yeah. Yep. So I clean these. They were spotless. Dan's put the new bearings in, and then we torque these down to thirty. Yeah, which is half of what they well half of what they need to be just yep. for the measuring purposes. Yep. Sixty is what it was saying. Yeah. And that's I, it. Let's get amongst it. Yeah. Let's put a crank in it. Done. Yep.